welcome UPL members and anybody else who might be watching. I'm Ashton Moore, coach of the Gen 7 Guard Chomps. This week, we're getting into our rematch weeks at the end of the season. So this is week 10. We're going to be having a rematch with to Fat Panda and his Mad City Machamps. Now, last time, we lost to Panda, uh, mostly because our Alola Marowak that we were relying on to break all of his walls got pri uh, priority switcherooed by his clef key, and then we lost our item, and obviously we lost the game at that point. Uh, our Celestila got burned by Scald, and then we really just did not have the power to get through his very, very tanky, heavy team. Now, he has had a couple of roster swaps since then. He has added Dodrio, Guzzlord, and Sizor to his team, which I think were great additions, and I'm going to have a hard time dealing with a couple of those if he happens to bring them. I've also gotten a couple changes, though. I've added Thunderous T. I've added Como O. That's given me a lot more potential to boost and just overall be way more offensive and threatening towards a couple of his mons I couldn't really touch before. So we're going to get into how I'm going to plan on handling this rematch. My goal is to use as many new different Pokemon as possible uh, just so I didn't look predictable. First off, I'm going to be running Mega Deancey. There's really no reason not to do this because it's the only thing I have that hits the Mega, the mega Sableye super effectively. The Moonblast off of this thing will do insano damage to Mega Sableye, and that is one of my top priorities in this battle, getting that thing out of play or at least crippled. So we're going to be running Moonblast, obviously, for that. Diamond Storm is going to be to hit Blissey. We can do... It's basically a roll, a 50% shot to 2 HKO Blissey, assuming it doesn't have leftovers. Even then, it still does a lot of damage. And also we can boost our defense and potentially take hits we shouldn't really be t uh, taking otherwise. Hidden Power Fire is there for Sizor. If I suspect that he might switch into Sizor to soak a Moonblast, I can Hidden Power Fire and just blow that thing back. Heal Bell is the last move. I needed to run Heal Bell on something. I do suspect that he might be running like Prankster T-Wave on the Klefki. He'll definitely be running Toxics, and he'll also have that priority Prankster Will-O-Wisp from Sableye, or even just the Mega Sableye using it regularly. This is going to allow me to save a couple of mons that I really need not to be burned. Also, we're going to be running Alola Marowak again. It's too good not to run against his team. There's just no way we can't do that. We're going to be running Bone Meringue. That's mainly coverage for potentially Klefki if I suspect that he's got the Fire Resist Berry and also Toxapex. Heck, even Doug Trio, we could break a Sash with that. Flare Blitz is going to kill or maim literally anything on his team. Shadow Bone is there to Oko Wabafet. And then Low Kick is there really for Guzzlord. Also, my speed investment is made specifically for Guzzlord to outspeed a max speed variant of Guz Guzzlord. I didn't go full speed because I would speed tie with Alolan Golem. My thought is that if he's bringing Alolan Golem, it's probably going to be Scarf Galvanize, in which case I will never outpace it, or it's going to be some sort of uh, slightly bulkier magnet pull set to attempt to trap Celesteela, so I don't think I need the speed investment to beat that. I do need low kick in order to one-shot the Guzzlord, and that's just going to be one of my only methods to actually do so. Obviously, ability we have to run Rockhead, otherwise we basically kill ourselves on Blissey, and that's the main mon I want to be able to set up on. Moving on, we're going to be running Thunderous T. This is my main check to Toxapex. We're going to be running Nasty Plot. There's plenty of opportunities to set Nasty Plot up. If we can get two of those plots down, we can even potentially kill the Blissey in two shots. Anyway, we're going to be running Volt Switch. That's going to allow us to gain momentum, potentially if we don't want a Nasty Plot, or if we suspect he's going to switch out of Toxapex. Uh, Thunderbolts are our standard coverage move, and then Grass Knot's going to be there for two reasons. It's going to hit Doug Trio. And with our modest max special attack investment, it's going to do a minimum of 99% damage to the Doug Trio. So there's a very, very, very tiny possibility he'll possibly live that. It'll also kill the Alolan Golem. It doesn't matter what his investment is. 
Now, as far as the speed investment that I've done, I've done one point higher than the fastest jolly Sizor that he could possibly run. I'm never going to outspeed Dodrio or Dugtrio, so there's no real reason to think about that. The next fastest mon he has is Klefki. Obviously, that's not going to be speedy. And then the next one is Sizor, and this allows me to outspeed that. The item is going to be Charty Berry. That's for two reasons. One, it allows us to take a Stone Edge from Dugtrio, or even the Z version of Stone Edge from Dugtrio, and then kill with Grass Knot. It also allows us to take a Scarf Alolan Golem, which actually goes one or two points of speed higher than a Modest Thunderous can. But I value the extra damage on Dugtrio more than I value being able to outspeed Alolan Golem. All right, for our other new mon for this matchup, Como. We're going to be running Belly Drum set again. The reason why is because we can set it up against several different mons, Blissey being the most obvious one. With Lumberry, we can also set up potentially against Klefki and against the Sableye once it's already Megad. If we set up Belly Drum, unless he has a choice banned Sizor for Bullet Punch, and it's a roll, we will kill everything on his team with a combination of Drain Punch, Iron Head, Dragon Claw. That is assuming, however, that he's not unaware Clefable, and I do expect him to be unaware Clefable. That, that is my expectation. So Clefable will have to be removed before we can do this as well, but that's my idea. Basically, this will kill all his tanks once Clefable's out of the way. Now, obviously, because he is a more stall-oriented team. I do expect him to run a full suite of hazards against me. Therefore, I've got to run a defogger. I can't run Thunderous T, defog. I need all of his move slots for other moves. So, Savali is my only other option. So, we're going to be running normal Savali with defog. We're going to be running him tanky with leftovers uh, and then fully invested in, into physical attack. For coverage moves, we're going to be using Heat Wave. That's mainly for Sizor. Poison Fang, this is one of my key stops or checks to Mega Sableye. Obviously, we can't toxic that thing, and we need to get it out of commission as quickly as possible. He only has access to Heal Bell through Blissey, and I don't think he's going to bring it this time around. I'm not a very status-oriented player, so my thought is get the Poison Fang, 50% chance to toxic, Obviously, once he sees it's normal, he's very, very likely to switch the Sableye in against it. And basically, then we trick him, and we've got him right there. For the last move slot, I'm running Explosion. I just like to run things that explode. I don't know why. Anyway, that will do a ton of damage to the Clefable, or really to anything on his team that's not named Sizor or Klefki. Uh... And potentially that'll allow us to, you know, snap up a kill on something we wouldn't have otherwise been able to break. And in the last slot, we're going to be running good old Celestila again. Almost the same set that we ran last time. Heavy Slam Earthquake will be our main, uh, main moves. We're going to run Leech Seed, obviously, because that allows us to survive pretty well and drain off of, uh, uh, off of his tanky mons. However, in the last slot, we're going to run Flamethrower. Once again, that's mainly there for Sizor, also kind of there for Klefki. I expect that once he sees a Heavy Slam or an Earthquake, he's not going to think about the Flamethrower, and then potentially that's a free Beast Boost for me. If I can start getting the Beast Boost rolling, obviously I can win the game that way as well, so that's my other thought. Now the two main things I'm worried about when it comes to Celesteela are the Mega Sableye, because that thing will be able to tank any move we can possibly do against it. And then the Alolan Golem. Specifically in case it's a magnet uh, magnet pull set that is designed to trap me. Or if it happens to be a Scarf Galvanized set. A return is going to kill Celesteela. So if he was Scarf Galvanized, that would be pretty bad. I have just enough speed on the Celesteela to outpace the fastest non-scarf Alolan Golem that he can run, and I'll be able to kill it obviously off with Earthquake. One other thing to note here, I am not investing in attack. Now, I could be more effective by doing so, however, 
I don't feel that I really need to. My main idea with Celestila is to be able to tank Dodrio and tank Doug Trio. And then obviously to kind of check Sizor as well, because it can take hits very easily from both of those. So I wanted to invest maximally in HP and just enough defense to be one point lower than attack. That allows my beast boost to be applied to attack, which can potentially allow me to sweep while maintaining maximum bulk. Uh, so there you have it. That's my plan this time around for the rematch. And we'll get into the battle and see how it goes. Welcome to the battle portion of this week's video. In team preview, looking at his team, the biggest threats that I see are that unaware Clefable. I'm pretty sure it's going to be unaware anyway. The Mega Sableye, obviously, which is obviously always going to be there. And then the Sizor. So the main things that he did not bring that I was worried about were the Doug Trio and the Alolan Golem. So those are really big to not see here. Uh, also, to to an extent, the Dodrio, so there's not going to be any shenanigans with that. Uh, it looks like he's brought a very stall-oriented team, just like he brought the first time that we fought. But I've kind of come prepared for that, so hopefully this will go well. I'm looking at his team. There's not really anything that's going to stop Thunderous T, except for Blissey, and I can just Volt Switch out of that. Uh, also, I can gauge what his Blissey is. I'm pretty sure it's the standard defensive build, but we'll see. So getting into the battle, we're going to go ahead and lead. Uh, he's going to lead with Klefki. I'm going to expect that he's going to go for something or maybe a switch, but he goes for a toxic. It's not going to be great because now Blissey can stall us out. We will still uh, do a Thunderbolt and then a Volt switch here. See if maybe he has Protect or Wish, which is what I expect. And we're going to go right into the Marowak. Now, outside of potentially sweeping with our Belly Drum Como O or our Beast Boost Celesteela, which is defensive, our main mission here is to put Alola Marowak in front of this Blissey as many times as humanly possible. Also, because most of the primary threats to Alola Marowak are not even in this battle, the main thing we have to watch out for here is that Sizor. So, gauging what its build is is going to be one of the key pieces of intelligence I've got to gather before I can potentially sweep this team. So here I'm almost sh assured that he's going to be switching into that Toxapex. So we're going to go for a Flare Blitz. The only thing that would resist it is the Toxapex and then we can just Bone Meringue that into the grave if it does come out. He is going to reveal the Protect so he does have Wish Protect. And I'm still going to go for Flare Blitz just in case he switches into the Sableye or something else. And it turns out that we burn a red card there. So it's nice to get that item out of the way right now. It's not going to stop my Como O sweep or my Celesteela sweep later on in the game. Very, very nice. So Steel is going to come out. I know that the Toxapex can't really do anything to Steela. And I still have that Como O to sweep anyway. There's no real reason for me to fear a Scald here. Also, it could be that he puts in Sizor at some point and I can burn it after he realizes that I'm offen or physically offensive. So I'm just going to go for that Leech Seed. He's going to go for Toxic Spikes. Uh, I'm just going to start spamming Earthquake, expecting him to set up a second layer, which is totally fine. I've got Silvali for that. And then he goes into Sizor and we hit that with an Earthquake. Now, I didn't expect him to sack the Toxapex there, obviously, because it has Regenerator and he has value later on. So I considered potentially using a different move there. I didn't think it was really necessary, though. I thought that if he switched into anything, it would probably be the Mega Sableye, and the Mega Sableye wouldn't take much damage anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Anyway, he switches into Sizor. I am going to go ahead and reveal the Flamethrower here, expecting that he'll probably stay in, but he does switch right back into that Toxapex after it's gained its uh, health back through Regenerator. And we will uh, go ahead and try to Leech Seed it again. So we get an unfortunate miss with that Leech Seed. Not a big deal, though. What we're looking at now, since we have gone ahead and we figured out that the Sizor is a defensive variant that will not outspeed our Marowak, the next biggest thing we have to take care of is the Mega Sableye. We've got to get it toxic, and the perfect opportunity 
is right now because I also need to get rid of the toxic spikes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch into Silvali, expecting he's probably going to switch out of this Blissey here. And I'm going to go for the Defog. Then, hopefully because he sees it Silvali normal, he'll switch in the Mega Sableye. I'll be able to spam a couple toxic fangs on him, and or poison fangs on him, and we'll see what happens. So, we'll go ahead. And it, it turns out to be a double switch. So it'll be Savali versus Toxapex. Now, it is important to note that in the last match that we played, I brought Savali with uh, Thunderbolt on it, and I actually killed the Toxapex with that. So he has to kind of suspect that, hey, you know, maybe I have a special move, and he's not specially defense invested. So I'm expecting he's going to switch out into that Sableye right now. We'll go ahead and go for the Defog. The Sableye does come in, and we're going to go ahead and go for that Poison Fang. Hopefully, we'll get a Toxic 50% chance, so flip, coin flip, and we do get it. In return, we get Mean Looked and Locked In, so that means we are going to lose Silvali here almost for sure, but Silvali has done its job. We got rid of one layer of Hazards, and we got the Toxic on the Sableye, so that's mission accomplished. That's all, uh, that's all Silvali really needed to do. Here, I'm going to get Toxic stalled out. I'm uh, just going to go for Heat Wave because that does the most damage, even after a Calm Mind. It is also nice to kind of have that. So he's Calm Mind Recover, and then probably uh, Shadow Ball, maybe something else. That also means that the Sableye probably can't really hurt Como at all, unless maybe he's got Will-O-Wisp. And I would expect he'd have Foul Play before that. We'll go into Toxapex, saving a little bit of health on the Sableye, but it won't really matter. We can kill it with the Marowak. Now that Silvali's down, we're going to go ahead and go right back into that Alola Marowak. There's really no reason not to. I'm going to expect he's going to switch the Toxapex out here and go for a Flare Blitz. He does not switch out. Instead, he opts to go for a Toxic Spikes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go for a Boomerang. Miss that attack. Uh, but the Mega Sableye's come back in. There is no reason here for me to not fire off a Flare Blitz. Even if he does kill my Alola Marowak here, there, this is a roll to kill him. And also, even if it doesn't kill him, he'll die from toxic damage. If he goes for recover, he'll die next turn to an attack. So it doesn't really matter here. I don't need this Alola Marowak if it gets rid of the Sableye right now. So we will go for the Flare Blitz. We get a bad roll. He'll go for the Shadow Ball, take most of our HP off. The special defense drop isn't too big of a deal to me. Then the Sizor comes out. This is perfect. My idea here is that he's probably going to go for a Pursuit Trap. So he's going to have me stay in. He doesn't know what my speed investment is just yet. Because I haven't really gone up against anything that's over base like 20 speed. So we're going to go ahead and wipe him out with a Flare Blitz. That's Sizor out of the way as well. So now Mega Deancey can get some work done. And we'll go ahead and Boomerang this Toxapex, take half of its HP out. We'll die to the Scald, but we don't really need a Lola Marowak anymore anyway. At this point, Sweeping is looking pretty good with either the Belly Drum Como or the Celesteela. My idea here is maybe I can force this Toxapex to die, or I'll just get some more chip damage on Blissey and have a free switch into my Steela or Como when he casts Wish or Protect, and then I can set up and win the game. So that's what I'm going for. I'm just going to go nasty plot, nasty plot. Hopefully I can do 50% damage to that Blissey. Hit him with a Thunderbolt. That is not going to do as much as I had hoped. I think it was a roll to do about 50%, but with the leftovers recovery, it's not possible. Go ahead and Vol switch out into the Como. Obviously the poison will get cured by our Lumberry that we decided to bring, but then he goes for Seismic Toss. I was not expecting to see Seismic Toss there, and then the Wish is obviously going to heal him back up. Here I had two options, really three options, I suppose. I could go for the Belly Drum, but then Seismic Toss potentially kills me outright. Uh, I can't really afford to have that happen. Also, I know that Unaware Clefable still exists, so eh, not really going to be a thing. I could go for a prediction Iron Head on the Cliff Fable, but assuming that it is fully defense invested, which I fully expect it's going to be, that's not going to be a good thing either because we're not going to do 50% damage.
of all the different plays I can do, what I ended up doing is just hitting Drain Punch, expecting he might just go for another Wish on the Blissey, or he might just sacrifice it off here. Uh, I could have gone for the Iron Head. It was a very high thing on my list of things I might want to do. But in, at the end of the day, I wanted to gain that HP back so I could potentially set up later. But he is going to switch into that Clefable. We're going to hit it. And we're going to be able to say that, hey, yeah, that's definitely defense invested. And it goes right out into the Celesteela because this is the only thing that's going to handle unaware Clefable. He reveals cosmic power. This tells me several different things. First off, it tells me three of his moves just outright. He's got cosmic power. He's got Calm Mind, and he's got Moonlight or Soft Boiled. Uh, wait, not Soft Boiled. Just Moonlight. This tells me he's got one offensive move, and that offensive move is either Moonblast or something similar to it. Uh, I don't think he's running a fire move here. So I can really just sit here, and I can hit Heavy Slam and potentially uh, see how much damage I can do. I didn't quite roll 50% there, and he went for another boost. I was hoping maybe he'd switch out, but he didn't. So now I have to go for Leech Seed. Unfortunately, we miss. But now we're going to hit it, and that damage is going to rack up over time. Now we're just going to Heavy Slam him until he is dead, or until he reveals the Fire move, which I highly doubt that he's going to have on this set. Unfortunately for him, he can't really go for Calm Mind Boost. Well, he does go for one here, but... Overall, this is a losing game for him. I'm just going to let this kind of play out. Uh, but we do take down the Clefable eventually. Unfortunately for him, the Clefable just cannot survive all the heavy slams. We do take it out, get our beast boost, and now we're in sweeping territory. Go ahead and go for an earthquake on the Tox Apex when it comes out. The Scald Burn would hurt, but we do have other ways around that. Lefty comes in, we go for Earthquake. I expect here he might switch into Blissey, so instead of going for another Earthquake, I go for a Heavy Slam, because I know that will kill the Klefki anyway. Uh, so we do take that out. Now we're at plus two. The Toxapex is going to come out. Earthquake is going to be an Oko. And now the Blissey is going to get killed by the Heavy Slam, and that is going to be GG. And that's the game. Uh, so GG to Fat Panda. Uh, we did win the rematch, so thank goodness. Uh, I think our prep was pretty good for what we thought he would bring, which was another kind of stall variant. I don't think he's played this level of stall since really the first couple weeks of the league. Uh, so I thought he'd, this was probably a good time for him to bring it back to that. I was very, very happy not to see the Doug Trio and the Alolan Golem. I think that overall... His team was a little bit too passive. Uh, really, the only offensive thing that he had on this team that he brought this time around was the Scizor, uh, which, I mean, we had plenty of prep for. Uh, so, yeah, GG. Uh, next week, we'll be rematch against Mario Man, and that will decide who wins the second playoff spot for our division. So, thanks for watching. See you later.